So one of the things that we know happens is that when we voodoo floss, we are able to sometimes restore how these tissues are sliding and gliding. It takes time to get areas to make those changes, you know. But I do want to touch on, because if we're starting from ground zero, um, first time I flossed, I was watching a video from Kelly. And I knew after doing that one time, like, this is a breakthrough. And I've used it so many times when someone can't get into motion. So I want to get them into motion. I want to get them mastering these basics of using their joints, and they can't. And, I mean, we used the word miracle. The original word was voodoo. You know what I mean? You could say whatever you, word you want at it. But when you've had joint problems for a very long time. Rich Vernon calls it Lazarus floss. <laughs> really? <Yeah. laughs> or when you're from the dead. When someone, you know, has had a problem with an area for 20 years or something and they floss right one time and they feel better than they have in 20 years. And then they're able to get into motions, which can create long term changes. This is a fundamental that I would love to have Kelly break down. And I'm super grateful. First thing we got here, my wife says, I'm going to go ask Kelly to floss my knee. I'm like, don't ask him that. Like he just, no, we're just nerds. We're in. It. That's okay. She's like, no, we're already friends. I'm like, how did this happen? Because <laughs> <laughs> so, I know where the real power <laughs> resides in every relationship. <laughs> oh, oh, for sure. I came in and didn't say hi to you. I came in and said hi to Andy. Hey, Andy. Of course. Yeah. She's, I mean, she's the general manager. I don't manager. know what's going on. I got no idea what's going on. <laughs> I'm the thoroughbred out there. She's the general manager. My you know? official t role in the company is just talent. That's what it says. Like, that is my, <laughs> like, I don't even have a job. I'm just talent. You got to stay yeah. hot. Stay hot. <laughs> well, you know, I think this, you're bringing up something really important because I think people misunderstood why we mobilized, right? So there's something that you do I really like and something that you'll see, I think in my language, I don't do a lot of corrective exercise. Just not that interested in it. I regress and progress. That's a language that you, you speak, right? All the fundamentals can be made harder or more simple, but they're still the fundamentals. So we're going to squat today no matter what but it may be a split squat. We may be squatting high. We may be goblet squatting. You may be squatting six inches, but we're squatting today. We can regress and progress that in terms of how we want to change the stimulus, load different tissues differently, right? Mobilizations, I consider as position transfer exercises. I do this thing so it allows me to access position so that I can do the fundamentals. And I think I can, it's confusing because some of those mobilizations can help us feel better, get out of pain, desensitize something, change a tissue. But ultimately it always comes back to the thing, which is, did you move better? Did it give you access to move? And I think really people don't understand, or I, I did a poor job explaining that the whole point of the book was like, here's movement theory. Here's how we integrate the concepts of physiology to explain why we coach the way we coach, why we get the best movement the way we do. Here's how we predict future movement. And if you can't do that thing, here's a language that I felt really worked for me because it maintained my ability to train by keeping that intact. Instead of, and don't get me wrong, corrective exercises work. It's just not a language I like or particularly use. And so it's one that I felt like adds a lot of complexity. It's like you speak English, but we're going to do this movement that's going to help your English in classic Greek. And you're like, what? <laughs> you know, I don't, you know, and then... I found that those corrective exercises didn't always maintain time for me to get under load or time to develop skill or play because I was doing all this corrective work. And remember, I came out of physical therapy. I'm a classically trained physical therapist, which is all about corrective exercise. Mm -hmm. But what I found was that if I was squatting or do some iteration of squatting, and then I could mobilize the hip to improve the squatting, that was a really tight couplet. And then I was able to make that even easier instead of saying, well, here's another hour of work you need to do so you can do the squatting. Can you explain to us what flossing is and what it does, how it works? I'm not sure. I know, right? Uh, well, first that's of all... That's actually like a legitimate, fair answer, I think, to a lot of these things, right? Well, here, here's what we can propose. Um, if you... You can't tell, but there's cocaine wrapped in... Uh, <laughs> that's in, my in, favorite They're drug. addicting it, when it, I look it, at them. It I'm really like, is. I want to wrap feel something up. You feel great. <laughs> <laughs> this one is blue and quaaludes. Oh. Um, so what we think is happening... Yeah, I, I borrowed this language from a guy named Gil Headley, who is this uh, crazy anatomist. And if you go onto the web, <laughs> trigger warning, you can watch Gil working with cadavers and live, like not live oh. tissues, but fresh yeah. tissues. And you can really see, he was the first person who explained, in college, for example, I dated this girl who was, went through rolfing school. So I became aware of fascia 
in college in the 90s. That was when the first time I was like, fascia, what's that? You know? And Gil was the first person I saw describe fascia and show what fascia looked like in his work. And he describes the layers of the body as like sliding surfaces. And I was like, oh, that is the, the catch. Because people have heard of ART, active release technique. And the idea is we're trying to restore how tissues are sliding and gliding. So I, one of my metaphors is you should be like layers of cold silk sliding over steel springs. I want those tissues to slide. Why is it being hydrated important? Why is being warmed up important? Why is having access? Because if your tissues are congested or sticky, they don't slide and glide, and that can restrict your range of motion. Power Project family, how's it going now on this podcast? Mark, Andrew, and I, we talk about fasting a lot. We talk about the ketogenic diet and a lot of different types of diets, but... Bubs Naturals has a product. They have the collagen protein, which is amazing. They have these apple cider vinegar gummies, which are like crack. But they have <laughs> they are these yeah. They have these MCT oil powder packets that ah, I've never used to do this. But in the morning, I'll wake up and I'll put it in coffee, and the smoothness number one in terms of the mixing is amazing. But the consistency of my energy through the day because of the MCT oil powder is peak, Andrew. Mm. How's your experience? With yeah, no, it's, it's exactly it. It's like the best way to start the day. Uh, you're satiated, you're energized, and you're just ready to crush the day. Uh, so if you guys want to get in on this MC2 oil powder, head over to bubsnaturals.com and at checkout, enter promo code POWERPROJECT to save 20% off your entire order. Again, Bubs Naturals promo code POWERPROJECT to save 20% off. Links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. So, for example, in a lot of Achilles... On the heel cord, if, if someone grabs your skin right now, you should see that your skin should slide in all directions over the tendons of your hand, mm -hmm. right? But if I grab the average person and grab their Achilles, their skin is adhered to the Achilles. Mm. And so suddenly that fascia isn't sliding. And now I have like an exoskeleton around the Achilles. So we don't use the word adhere, right? Ad, you know, adhesions is an old word that definitely was like a triggering word for a lot of people. <clears throat> you can go through the entire book of Supple Leopard and I mentioned adhesions once by saying, we don't use the word adhesions, right? But we are trying to restore how your tissues are articulating with the neighborhood. And that's how we think about it. Like, I'm trying to improve the neighborhood. So one of the things that we know happens is that when we voodoo floss, we are able to sometimes restore how these tissues are sliding and gliding. We have less internal resistance through the layers. Some of those are contractile layers. Some of those are connective tissue layers. Some of those are dermal layers. But then also we know that we're just putting input into the brain. So we're just changing how the brain is perceiving what's going on there. And that might downregulate threat. It may change some aspect. And if that's the reason you can suddenly have access to the range, I'm like, cool, I don't care. Does it work? Yes or no? One or zero. Better, same or worse, right? That's the only thing we should care about. If you compress that pretty tight for a minute and pop it off, blood flow comes crashing back in. Mm. Suddenly we have improved hydration and better blood flow. And if I have a hot spot where a tendon is in, coming into a, a joint, or a bone, and all of a sudden there's more blood flow in that, that can change my pain and give input to the brain and allow me to move again, right? So if I wrapped your elbow and flexed your elbow, I may be changing some of the joint articulations. So now maybe I'm mobilizing an actual joint, right? So maybe that's what's changing and I'm giving the brain permission to access a range of motion that was stiff or I didn't have before. That could be it. And I'm down with saying it could be all of those things or none of those things better, same, or worse. And then we can say, well, is it easy to do myself? Can I scale? Do I need to be a professional person? Do I need to talk to a doctor to make myself feel better? No. And the fact that it's so inexpensive, is it a perfect solution? No, but it's another tool that I can keep. And I, when I travel around the world and teach or, or venture, I take a voodoo floss band with me because we've had friends who have voodoo floss and sprain their ankle the first day of a trek or on a vacation, you know, or my soldiers who are in steer environments, suddenly they can manage swelling or make themselves feel better so they can continue to do what they need to do. Real quick, that's what actually you helped me with my jujitsu tournament. I oh, sprained yeah. my foot and then you immediately told me to voodoo, elevate, and the, the, the injury was recovered within like a week and a half. But like the voodoo was, it made a difference immediately. Well, all we're doing is, so look, you're, you're built to move. That's the bottom line, right? So I think in the internet, it's really fun and 
and precious <laughs> to get to battle about tactics, like my kung fu style. You're wrong. Yeah, it's just so easy. And what you should be looking at underneath all the tactic is what's the underlying position that we're restoring here? Because once you start to see, and the way I speak is in archetypes, right? Here's a fundamental shape. Taking the hip into extension, like in a lunge position, is a fundamental archetype. I think, Ben, the work that you're doing inadvertently put people into hip extension for the first time in their lives. And their lives got better. Their backs felt better. Their knees felt better. Because you have to use the body in the way it's, it's used. And most people don't actually extend the hip. They stand and walk. They get on the, the Stairmaster or the treadmill. And they just don't extend the hip. So suddenly there are near end ranges spending a ton of time. People think it's about the front leg, which is great. But I think about the miracles you're having are actually from the back leg in a hip extension. You and I have talked before how people... It's probably very rare for a lot of folks to even get like below parallel, like in a in a squat uh, position, right? Remember, remember, you, you were like months and months, and you months were like and maybe I, even years yeah, without doing it. Sit at the table, sit at the toilet, sit at the bed, sit in the car. When's the last time you got up and down off the ground? There's a great writer named Philip Beach who wrote a book called Muscles and Meridians, and write uh, that shit down. Yep, it's <laughs> if if you want to really understand the love of embryology, this is your book. And if not, it's very technical, but he has an idea in there that the body is self tuning. That one of the ways that the body tunes itself is through ground sitting. So one of the first things that I recommend for everyone to do to change their lives is to sit on the ground because you're going to sit side saddle. You're going to do 90, 90. You're going to kneel. You're going to squat. You're going to do a high kneel. You're going to sit cross-legged. You're going to long sit. And every time your brain's like, get out of that position, you do, you're exposing this end range positions. And suddenly you're like, oh, lawn sitting and some of these positions is like Eldoa. I'm loading a fascia. I'm taking the brain and, and the tissues to these end range positions, which helps to maintain the function of the knees, of the hips. So ultimately it comes down to here are these fundamental shapes you need to be in. I think everyone should be able to do a pistol. I don't think you have to be able to go up and down from a pistol, but I think you would be in a pistol. And what's the difference between a pistol and your sort of signature squat? There's no difference except one leg is in hip extension and the other leg is in flexion. Like, so a pistol, both legs are in flexion. The Ben squat is that split squat. One leg is in hip extension. That is exactly the same. The difference is people can access your position much easier than they can access the pistol position. But the hip is the same. The ankle is the same at end range. So are you able to do what your body is supposed to be able to do? Yes or no. And suddenly you're like, Oh, I can understand that all the training, it's just different tactics of ways of training these fundamental positions. Hey, little mama, let me whisper in your ear, like comment, subscribe to the channel. Cause we continue to bring you peak content on this channel. Obviously you guys are here. You guys have watched the whole video. So like comment, subscribe. All right. See you later.